Dunas's main objective with his ideas of, of technique are to make all the impediments to great expression go away. So one aspect is you want to have the idea that you have uncompromised musicianship. Now, unfortunately, our bow is only so long and our musicianship tells us that phrases are longer than the bow. So we need to have good bow changes to give the idea that we're not um, calling our attention to them or letting them uh, influence our musicianship. We want our musicianship to be master over what we're doing. So we're gonna go over some principles of bow changes. So we, the, the most important is just somehow we insist that the bow change doesn't exist. So without having any technique at all, that's the most important thing, is that your idea of the music overrides your technique. So you can have a, a terrible technique. It can still somehow make the, the phrase make sense. Of course, there are, there are a, a better ways to do it. And um, I've done maybe three or four good bow changes so far in my life. So it's kind of a perfection that's, that's hard to attain. So basically, how, the problem is how do you draw the bow one way and then they could go the other way without some lull or little dead zone in between when you're changing directions. So the answer is you don't go back the same way you came. You're always kind of going around uh, a loop of some kind. So the fir first kind of loop is a th sort of thin figure eight. So that is when you're going down bow, like that, right before you go up bow, you just go around a little bit the corner like that. And the bow goes up bow in a slightly skew way, where, where the tip of the bow starts curving out away from you. Then at the frog, it simply corrects itself. Right, so you can still hear it a little bit, I know, but it's better than... ...where that, that there's a dead zone in between. So, so the trick is then just to time you time the roundedness. Usually you start anticipating it before you go around. So that's one loop that can get rid of most of the trouble. And there's another way which that happens, which uh, also Isaac Stern was big on is, uh, is this idea. So try this, play down bow on the D string, up bow on the A. So notice how you kind of uh, reach your fingers down to play the A string. And kind of curl it to, to play in the D string again. So this time, do the same movement, but stay on the D string. So that also can give you a good bow change, uh, especially at the tip. Now you can also do both, which is really nice. So you're gonna come around the loop and also do that thing. So your hand's gonna make a beautiful little spiral in the air. We can do the, the thin figure eight and, and that move together. 
and that translates into a lovely a lovely almost like a spiral movement going uh, from down to up and again when you get up to down you just the bow just corrects its path but it is correct to find that your bow is going away from you as you approach the t uh, the frog, as opposed to, as opposed to that way, or even as opposed to, to straight. I don't understand the physics of it, but, but if you follow the ring of the sound, it seems to want to go that way. So changing to down. You just uh, let it correct to straight again, but not, not to the other way. 